Hey, hey, I'm Shay Warner, and you are listening to Casual Cattle Conversations. If you are ready to explore different management practices and focus on improving your operation and the beef industry, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited you are listening. Hey, folks, let's talk about ranch profit and productivity. The two things we all want, right? So this episode is full of simple, actionable tips to help you be more profitable and productive. On that note, uh, before we dive into that, I do want to let you guys know that I ran a giveaway for my YouTube followers. So for those of you who are watching, if you followed me within the last 90 days, I did a drawing and the winner is, give yourself a little drum roll, Ian Henkel. So Ian, if you are watching, send me a message on my website, casualcattleconversations.com, so that way I can get in contact with you and send you a gift card to your favorite farm store. Now with that, let's dive into why profitability and productivity matter. Now, you're probably shaking your head at me saying, come on, Shay, that's pretty straightforward. They go hand in hand. Obviously, if we're more productive, we will be more profitable because more work equals more money, right? Actually, I'd argue that's wrong. It comes down to being productive in the right areas each day, and that's something I've seen with myself on the ranch, myself with my own business, but it's also something that was brought to light with my guest, Zach Lindsley, a few episodes back, titled How Ranchers Can Take Back Their Time. He does a really great job talking about how his perspective on that has changed and the impact it's had on his profitability. But let's think through this just a little bit more. So we know that feeding cattle is necessary, but if you spend the majority of your day doing this, you don't have time for other things that are moving your business forward and generating revenue. These are actions like maintaining your finances, building relationships, implementing your cattle marketing strategy, selling those red hat reserve bowls. It could be a number of other things. These are just two examples. Now, I'm sure there are a few of you nodding along saying, yeah, 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 Shay, we know this, but... I bring it up because it's easy to fall into just checking things off and working on little things here and there and just trying to get stuff done. I mean, that to-do list is just endless, right? It's those day-to-day fires and those can consume our whole days, weeks, months of times, it seems like. But when we do that, we don't ever get to work on the business and see what and try and drive it forward. And so just my first tip to throw into this episode before we even really dive into the specifics of productivity and profitability for the ranch is to make a list and write down everything you do daily, everything you do weekly, and everything you do monthly. And then I want you to star the things that are most important to generating revenue on that list. Okay? Now, Let's dive into the specifics. I just wanted to talk about the relationship first. So we're going to start with profitability and then we'll go back to productivity. And we're going to talk about what drives profitability on an operation. Some things that go into that as few as a few as well as a few other resources to help you uh, move forward in that area. So profitability. If there is one piece of advice I have heard over and over and over again about ranching and the cattle business since I was 15 years old, it is to know your numbers. And I'm not just talking about year-end numbers and taxes. So it's important to know where you stand today so that you can look through that windshield, so you can look forward and make decisions going forward. It's also important to know where you were at in that rearview mirror, but I'd encourage you to go back to one of my episodes with John Haskell over a year ago, and he really talks about two different kind of accounting styles that ranchers need to maintain to have an accurate grasp on their finances themselves. Now, I bring this topic up because it comes up frequently in the Rancher Mind program. Improving how we manage as a business and understanding numbers is something... I see a lot of ranchers in and outside of the program interested in. And what I see is people know they need to clean it up. They know they need to do it, but they 
kind of struggle with the where do they start and are they the right person to do it? And I 100% get that. I am not a numbers person. That will not be my role on the operation. My mother-in-law and husband are way better at that than I am. And that is their department and that will be their department. I mean, <laughs> I kind of joke about it, but it's the reality was um, I told my husband early on, even before we were engaged that, you know, if we get married, I'm not doing the books. Like, no way. Once your mom is done, we will have to hire someone else or you do them because it's not going to be me. My time is better spent elsewhere. And I think about it like this. I don't think twice about calling a vet for something I'm not an expert in. I don't think twice about calling a nutritionist for help with our mineral program or what to feed cattle if, something I, if it's something I'm not confident in. So why do we think twice about outsourcing the books if there's no one on your operation who is fit to do the job? So one tip of advice if you're not sure if you or someone on your operation is fit for the job or just in general trying to create clear boundaries and making sure people are working in their best roles as best as possible i'd encourage you to have a team meeting or even maybe invest in programs such as the enneagram clifton strengths myers briggs the working genius model work with an expert who can help you learn who if anyone is the right person or specific tasks on your operation that's not even just the book work it can be other things as well and so that's just something to keep in mind now staying on the topic of profitability and your numbers once you know the numbers you need to know the direction you want to go a few months before we got married a family friend told phil you know it's good to have someone to row the boat in the same direction with so shout out to you mark for this advice because it's finally making the podcast. Um, but I find that vote also applies to everyone who is working on and with your operation. If you don't know what the end goal is, your decisions about all the other things that go into ranching are going to be all over the place. So break down your goals into one, five, and 10-year sections. And I have this outlined in the Move Your Ranch Forward goal setting book on my website as well, but we're going to talk about it a little bit here too. So big picture, what type of cattle do you want to sell? What do you want your margins to look like? How many revenue streams do you want? What do you want debt to look like? Why do you ranch? Have that direction so that way you know where you're going. And when you're working with your team, say, your accountant, your bookkeeper, your veterinarian, your nutritionist, your seed stock suppliers, they can help you make the decisions you need to move in the right direction. You want everyone to be rowing that boat in the same direction. Now, that was kind of big picture, that 10-year goal, what we just talked about. But for five years, so in the middle here, what goals can you set that are in line with those 10-year goals, but will happen a little sooner? Are your weaning weights going to be 50 pounds higher, but your input's the same? Do you have the business plan created for that alternative revenue source? Are you partway to your goals of reducing debt? Whatever it may be, think of a smaller goal that's in line with that bigger goal that's going to help you get to that final stage. And short term, so what can we do within the next 12 months? Can you work more closely with your seed stock supplier to create a more uniform craft calf crop? Can you pull bulls sooner? Can you build relationships with cattle buyers or feedlots directly? Can you hire someone to clean up those books for you? I mean, what can you do now? What can you do within the next 12 months that's in line with those bigger goals? And I just find that breaking it down sometimes reduces the overwhelm and it gives a little bit more act. It, creates a more defined space for which actions we need to work on immediately and which ones are more down the road. So these are just a few examples, like I said. But the final two things I want to talk about in relation to profit are knowing your resources and flexibility. So the goals you set for your ranch need to be feasible with the natural resources you have available and other resources in your geographical region. And might sound simple, but 
it's also sometimes tempting to modify the environment and then that can get out of control if we're not cautious and aware of it either. So I think it's always nice to go back to ground zero and remember what do I have available? What can I truly support? And how do I improve those natural resources as well to support more in the future if that's what we want to do? But you also need to be flexible, right? Drought, floods, and other factors can push back or move up your actions and goals. And that's okay. It's just a part of the process. But remember, it's your race and your pace. So you get to take it at on your own time. But just remember that. So a few resources I want to share before we dive into productivity. Um, if we're talking about profitability, it's something we talk about in the Rancher Minds program. That's on my website. Happy to talk about that more. I've also done a few podcast episodes on that. Otherwise, a lot of people like ranching for profit. There's the goal setting book on my website called Move the Ranch Forward. Um, specifically to finances, Ranch Right is a resource. And if you're looking to increase your profitability with genetics, check out Ranch Channel. RanchChannel.com, bull sales, western events, product information, and more right at your fingertips on the ultimate cowboy-friendly platform. Want to follow up-to-date markets? Head to RanchChannel.com. No need to dig for information on all these different websites. It's all right there on RanchChannel.com. Now that you know how to determine where you stand and where you want to go, let's talk about the most productive ways to get there. So on this topic of productivity... The biggest factor that impacts productivity is communication. I'm going to say that again. The biggest factor that impacts productivity is communication. It doesn't matter if you are a one man or one woman operation or if you have 20 employees. People need to know which direction you are rowing the boat for the long term and daily. One thing that kills productivity on our own operation is if my husband and father-in-law are harvesting out in the field and I'm out moving cattle, but we didn't tell each other that we might need help or exactly to what extent we were doing things. Like I might have said I was going to go check the cattle, but I maybe didn't plan on moving them right away. Or maybe they decided they wanted to move fields or move to a different field and not the neighboring field, so they needed help moving stuff and I didn't know I was going to be needed. So I've been halfway through getting cows moved to the next pasture when I've gotten a phone call saying that we need help. And I also maybe thought the hired hand was there today, but forgot to double check and didn't realize it. Whoops. Could have been better communication on both ends. Now, this is just one example. There are a lot of communication mishaps on our place. And I say that because I know we're not the only place that has a lot of communication mishaps. But to avoid this... I try to check in with Phil before I take on a bigger task that will take time. And the night before or the morning of, we do try to talk about, you know, what's the general plan for the day as best as we can, knowing things always change. But communicating and making sure that, you know, who is here to help today? How much help do you think you need? Um, do I have time to take on bigger projects today or do I just need to wait because you're not sure what you're going to need and you're probably going to need help and don't know when you're going to need it. It's all just a part of it. But also related to communication, we try to work on giving clear, concise directions and I found this is really important when you're training someone new as well. So, and if you're not sure if you're good at giving directions or poor at giving directions, because sometimes people under communicate and sometimes people over communicate. So ask the people you work with if you need to improve your communication and how it could be improved. Treat it like a workplace. We all have areas to improve on, We can, especially communication. We can all improve our communication. So ask your spouse, kids, or maybe you are the younger generation, so ask the older generation, what you can improve communication-wise, so that way everyone's on the same boat. Next, related to productivity, is technology. So remember what we said at the beginning. It's about spending your time in the right areas. The great news is there are tons of tech platforms out there that can help you save time with record keeping, book work, calculating break-evens, planning, etc. Go back to the list you made earlier about what you do daily, weekly, monthly, and decide what you can automate, eliminate, reduce, or delegate. There are likely things that you'll want to delegate in the future but can't today, and that's okay. Just put it on your goal list that someday that's what you want to automate or delegate so that you can spend time doing other things. 
And those other things might not be work either. Maybe you just want to reward yourself and go on vacation. But just a thought. After technology related to productivity, I want to talk about prioritizing. And this is really something that's important to be addressed. So we talked about spending our time in the right areas, right? And I know that can be challenging because our to-do list is a mile long too. So if you're looking at the big, huge list of all those things that need to be done and feel overwhelmed, let's break it down. One of my favorite ways to prioritize is using the four quadrant method, and it really doesn't take much time. So take a sheet of paper and split it into four equal sections. On the top left section, write urgent. On the top right section, write not urgent. And then on the other side, on the top, you're going to put important. And then on the bottom, you're going to put not important. So if you're watching the video, we have urgent, not urgent, important, not important. And then you're split four quadrants. Now, look at your to-do list, that long to-do list that feels a little overwhelming, and put each of those tasks into their respective quadrants. So is it urgent and important? Is it urgent but not important? Is it not urgent but important? And is it not urgent and not important? Now, I like to think of the urgent and important as what to do today, especially this week. And then not urgent and not important would be things that are nice to have now, but if it's next month or next year, it's probably not going to make a huge difference. And the other two categories, that's up to you. Use your own discretion. But most days, you know, we can look at the list and, list and we can do this prioritizing in our own head. But sometimes it's nice if you're a visual person to see this and break it down and have a little more direction. Now, my final productivity tip is to reduce your screen time. And you probably were not expecting that. If you follow me on social media, I have brought it up a couple times about how reducing screen time has impacted my own mental health and productivity, but it's actually more mental health and productivity, but it, well, I shouldn't say that. It was both. But so to give you a little story on this, when I first moved home, I would catch myself checking every email notification right as it came in because especially because I have an Apple watch so I could check it from there and I was just distracted. I was never present even when I was working on my computer. I wasn't present when I was working on the ranch. It was just huge distractions and once I turned off email and social media notifications, it was like I flipped a switch. Way more present, way more productive, not to mention not near as anxious about the day either. And since then, I've taken that a step further and set a screen time limit on my phone for 30 minutes of social media per day. After I hit that limit, the apps won't open without me overriding the system. And you can also delete apps off your phone. Um, actually, I would probably delete the apps off my phone if I didn't rely on them heavily for my business. Um, and then just go on the computer whenever I wanted to check Facebook, Instagram, yada, yada, yada. I think social media is great. It's a huge tool and important tool to leverage for our ranches and any business. But we need to set our boundaries too because my guess is you are probably a little more addicted to your phone than you realize. And that's not something I realized until I set those screen time limits. Um, and I'll also note no social media on from Saturday at noon to... Sunday at 7 p.m. It's all completely turned off. So if you have made it this far into the episode and want a solid framework for setting goals, prioritizing your tasks, and just becoming more productive and profitable in 2025, use the link in my show notes to access the Move Your Ranch Forward goal setting book for 2025. Again, that's Move Your Ranch Forward in 2025. And it's a goal setting book. It's not a planner. It's very based on how to set goals, those one, five, 10 year goals. I've got a sheet in there that you can print for that quadrant method. There's a few other tips in there as well. And that's available on my website today. It's a digital download and you just access it right away. So that's that. I hope that these tips that I shared about profitability and productivity resonated with you, even if you've done some more advanced work and they just served as a great refresher happy to do that. Hope they helped you in some way. 
Happy ranching, folks. Have a great day.